on, everybody? Welcome to the Obsession. I'm Carl Bucky. I am Mike Stather. Mike. Yo, buddy. You got any questions over there? Nope. Well done. All right. Well. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> what do you got? So, I had a guy actually ask me this. Uh, it's maybe a week ago or so, and did he watches. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Appreciate I'll throw you. Those names out there because I don't want to alienate you from your friends. <laughs> but. Uh, you he guys said, uh, to them? "No, well, <laughs> maybe some people do." Yeah. Uh, he's like, "Well, you guys are always doing stuff on your properties and stuff like that." He's like, "So," he basically asked, "He's like, are you worried about the activity on your property?" Um, one, it's kind of a two-parter, and yeah. he's like, "And when do you decide you're not going in anymore, basically, or you try to limit it as much as you can?" Mm. So I said, oh, yeah. well, "That's a pretty good question." It's a good question. Well. I'll start my view on my property. I uh, I limit my entrances and exits beginning of August. That's when I start to limit things. The rest of and uh, through my hunting season. The rest of the year, we can go on there every day. I don't care. Yeah. So you knew you were gonna say that because it's the same thing I said. <laughs> Ah, it doesn't matter to me. That's when the wife can yeah. get on, walk around, do yeah. her thing, go, yeah. whatever. You want to go camping? Take kids want yeah. to go camping? Go camping, do your thing, whatever. That's what it's for. Yeah, because like, you know, here, for instance, you know, we're doing trees. Yeah. Again. So, you know, we're going to be planting trees here over the next several weeks. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm going to be in and out watering trees for four months. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, and I'll come August, they got to make it. Oh, yeah on their own. I'm out. Yep. I'm, I'm going to be out of there, you know. So I'm the same way. August, I'm out. I tell the wife, don't even think about it mm -hmm. in August, you know, and um, at that point, you know, we're running, we're running cameras, the cameras, and, are up, yeah. cameras up and running and you, and you check them when you can check them. Yep. So it's the activity is there. Like, like Carl said, I don't care right now. We're running around and they're all over the place. I don't, yeah. It doesn't matter to me. I'll go right through the bedding area. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, I'll go right in there. I'll go in there right now. Yeah. What are you doing? Anymore? We probably will after we get done doing the podcast. That is correct. So I, I don't worry about it now. You know, and um, you know, one thing I do like to do as it gets later, like when I'm in watering trees, if I'm there with the four wheeler or with the tractor, I let it run. I always let it run. And, and there's been times I've been in the property during season on the wheeler. I let it run. Mm -hmm. um, last year, for example, I was going in and out, even though I didn't want to, filling water holes. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, we um, had dry. It was yeah, dry. I, I didn't want to be in there, but, but I had to have the water. Yeah, the four wheeler was a conditioned sound. Yeah, in my mind, because they heard it a lot, mm -hmm. and it didn't shut off. So they know exactly where you're at, yeah. what it's doing, and when you go away. When it shuts off and it gets quiet. So when deer get nervous. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's a quick you know. example. Last <laughs> night, or last night, Friday night, I was mowing the cornfield though. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that big cornfield on level two is, you know, you're down and back and a couple hundred yards. And I come back from one down movement coming back and I look up and there's nine antlerless deer in, in the shooting gallery, which is only mm -hmm. 40 yards <laughs> away from where I'm at. I'm on the wheeler, never stopped, just kind of looked at them, and they looked back at me and went back to eating the rye. Yeah. And they stayed there the entire time I was mowing that, like I'm talking over an hour. Stayed there the whole time. Right. So, is what it is. Um, they don't, this time of year, connect the wheeler with a hunter. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and it was the same with you when you were doing the water hole, because they didn't connect you with, you know, you're doing the water, they leave, or you leave, and they don't have human scent, they don't have nothing, nothing yeah. scares them. Right. They're like, oh, that's cool, you know? And that's kind of, you know, the big thing. We do try to have everything done by the beginning of August. I don't let, uh, you know, nobody goes onto my property after that. If I go in there, which is very seldom, I do not check cameras that are anywhere close to where I expect deer activity and if I do go in there it's usually like a midday to check the food plot cameras mm -hmm. change the chips 
So I'm not interfering with any of the deer movement, I would suspect. Yep. And I'll tell you this, from the beginning of September through the beginning of bow season, which is for this year, I think it's the 12th or the 16th in our state, I am not in there at all. Or this year we'll be out west hunting, so that helps. Correct. Yes. Yeah, I, and I run cell cams um, here because they work, so um, I don't go in there at all unless I have to. We already yeah. know what's going on yep. for the most part. You know, Carl's the same thing as the stands that we're going to go hunt at his place. We're going to hunt at the right times and the right winds. Um, and then each of us are going to pass by whatever X amount of cameras to mm -hmm. go to that. That's when we change chips, chips and come back out. Yeah, know, so and the only reason I don't have cells <coughs> is because I they my just don't work. The yeah. They don't work there. So, so just we're real smart about that activity. We always like to limit our activity late, obviously. Um, you know, like I know last year when we were hunting at your place, um, I had my wife actually go in, I believe it was the day before I shot um, my buck and fill water. For me. Yeah. I think it was the 28th that she went in there. I had her go in there during the day. With yeah, the wheel. we were down at my place. Yeah, and fill yeah. the water holes for me. Yeah. And I killed the buck the next morning yeah. out there. So it's. If you're smart enough about it, <laughs> you yeah. can do it, yeah. you know, but yeah, try to limit August 1, get out. Yeah, just try to stay off your, any sure. other hunting areas. Let it settle down and, yeah. you know, and then just be careful on your entrances and exits. Yeah, well, I think we've really found that the, that three to four week, three to four week time period for, because that's, that's the time of year the bucks are moving into the yeah. properties. Um, yeah. If you just let them be, they get in there, they get comfortable, they know the property. Uh, you're going to have more bucks to hunt, I think. So, we appreciate you listening. We appreciate the question. Hopefully that answered your uh, question. If you get a chance, you can listen to us on Amazon, Apple, iHeart, Spotify, Google. RSS.com. For the podcast, if you want to watch us, you can hit us right here on YouTube. YouTube, baby. Right on. Subscribe to Rush Outdoors here right in the lower right, hand, <laughs> lower right hand corner. Just hit the Reaper. We appreciate each of you. See ya.